What's up everybody, Brian here in the lab and today we're gonna go over a basic morning gecko care guide. Now as you can see, next to me I've got one of my morning gecko tanks, but first we're gonna go over all the basic care facts and features about morning geckos so you know the basics of how to properly care for them, and then after that I'm gonna show you my cage. I just took everything out of it. I've got all the interior parts soaking. I'm gonna clean it and then I'm gonna put it back together. This is an older cage that I've had. I've had this cage for 15 years. This top is one that I custom built. Instead of getting a nice new cage and showing you from scratch how to build a morning gecko cage, I thought I would just do a quick, not a deep clean, but a quick clean on this cage and show you how to put it together because I think that gives you a better idea of how easy it is to put a morning gecko cage together. This certainly isn't anything fancy. It's old, it's got a crack in the back, it's got water spots that won't come off. And that's kind of the point I wanna show you is that's okay. It's real easy to put a cage together for these guys. Things don't have to be perfect and brand new out of the package and really expensive. You can do it fairly easily. So I'll show you how to do that after we give you some morning gecko care facts. So the first thing I wanna talk about with morning geckos is that they are social. Most reptiles are not social. Most reptiles, even if they'll tolerate other reptiles in their presence, like crested geckos, morning geckos are truly social animals. They thrive in a social group. They need a society to be fully healthy and fully functional. So these guys are best kept in big groups. I keep up to 20 geckos in a cage like this, and you may say that's a small cage for 20 geckos. Well, they only get about that big full grown. And like I said, they like groups, they like a social dynamic. So keeping them in large groups, no smaller than four is my general rule. That's what you wanna do for these guys and that keeps them healthier. The benefit to that is they're so vocal and social and they chirp and chase each other around. It makes them very neat display animals. So keep that in mind, get yourself a group of these guys if you're looking to get into them. Next up, let's talk about feeding. And feeding these guys is one of the best things about them. If you already have a crested gecko, you already have everything you need to keep these guys happy and healthy. If you don't have any geckos yet, feeding them is super simple. So in the wild, these guys are omnivores. They'll eat both insects and plant life, mostly fruits and nectars. That means in captivity, we can feed them live insects, pinhead crickets, very, very small mealworms for adults, uh, and fruit flies are the best options for these guys. However, they can also eat prepared crested gecko diets because they're fruit-based. This means prepared diets are easy to get, they're easy to feed. You can feed these guys something like either one of the Pangea flavors that contains insects, a Rapashi flavor with insects, or the Black Panther zoological diets work well for these guys because they also contain insect protein. But any of the other diets that don't contain insect are also fine. These guys can and do thrive on a diet with no live insects, just prepared diets with insect protein. So you can go that route. However, I do recommend feeding live insects because that's always a better option. The point of this is feeding them is so easy. It's as easy as a simple prepared crested gecko diet, just as easy as a crested gecko. Their diets are virtually identical and that makes these guys awesome, awesome to have, super simple to take care of. Next up, let's talk heating and lighting. Now, one of the things that I love most about these guys is they're active during the day. So that makes them a great display animal. However, they are not diurnal. These guys aren't strictly awake only during the day. They have actually evolved to be awake during the day and at night, and therefore they do not require UV rays like a lot of diurnal reptiles do, think uh, bearded dragons. So you don't need special lighting for these guys. As long as they have enough light to tell night and day, just a normal light cycle, that's all they need. They are a trep tropical species, however. A tropical species? Tropical is not a word. They're a tropical species. They're from the tropics of the world. So they do like it a little bit warmer. They can live at room temperature and they will do fine if you keep them about 70 degrees. However, ideally they need to be in the mid to low 70s at night and the mid to high 80s during the day. A great way to achieve that is just put a heat lamp over their cage, either a basking light or just a basic heat light, anything like that. Put it over the top of their cage and give them a nice hot basking spot at the top of their cage, anywhere in that mid 80s to mid 90s range will be perfect. These guys can tolerate temperatures down into the 50s and up to about 100. However, that's not ideal. You wanna keep them right about 90 degrees on their hot spot, mid 80s, low 80s at their cold spot, and then just shut the lights off and let them be room temperature at night 
that's the perfect ideal range for these guys. That's what they like and that's where they're going to thrive. Now lastly, let's talk about humidity. And again, because these guys are a tropical species, humidity is key and these two items are must-haves. Cocoa fiber is absolutely the bedding you want to use for these guys. If you don't have them in a live planted vivarium, you want to use cocoa fiber for your bedding. The reason being it soaks up water and it holds moisture, so it keeps the humidity much, much higher. The other thing you want, obviously, is a spray bottle. These guys need higher humidity. They're from the tropics, so they like the humidity above 50% constantly. Not like crested geckos where a peak is good and then it has to come down, otherwise they get shedding issues if they're wet all the time. These guys like it pretty humid all the time, so it should always maintain over 50% humidity. Generally spraying them at least twice a day is necessary. Also getting a cage with not a whole lot of ventilation. Obviously you don't want the cage physically wet all day long, but if it's too ventilated, it will dry out. And if your ambient humidity is too low, their cage will get too low. So you gotta find that balance. That's about the most challenging thing to keep these guys is the humidity. However, they're still very hardy and they're really hard to kill. So if you mess the humidity up for a day or two, it's not gonna be that detrimental to them. So it's real easy to do. Spray them a couple times, make sure your cage holds humidity and definitely use an absorbent base like cocoa fiber. You'll be all set. All right, guys, that is about it. Like I said, these are super simple to take care of, and that's basically all the care guides that you need to keep these guys happy and healthy. They're super simple, they're very vocal, they're very active, they make great pets, so I highly recommend looking into them. Before we go, I'm gonna go get all my cage decor out of the sink where it's soaking. I'll put this back together, show you guys how I arrange stuff and the basic basics I put in here to keep these guys happy, show you how easy putting together a cage can be, and you can get to work putting your own cage together. Get you some morning geckos, you will not regret it. All right, so what I've done today to this cage, I call a soft clean. A soft clean is what I do every couple weeks. That's where I take the main cage decorations out, wipe down the walls, spot clean the soil to get any really bad parts out, and then put it all back together. A deep clean is what I do every couple months. That's where I completely disassemble the whole cage, sanitize everything, replace the substrate, the whole nine yards. But I thought since I was doing this video, I'd do a quick spot clean, a quick soft clean, show you guys what I do, and then you could see kind of how I put the cage back together and give you an idea how to set up a real basic morning gecko cage. Now eventually I am gonna take this entire cage apart and make it a planted vivarium just for these morning geckos. I'm gonna do a video on that, so keep an eye out for it in the future, but for now we'll just put together another basic cage for these guys for the next couple months. The first thing I'll do is take this lid off. I've had this cage for like almost 15 years. I actually made this lid myself. You can see my high quality craftsmanship there. I did stain it to match the edge though. This is an old fish tank. Important when you take the lid off, make sure there's no a gecko stuck to the lid because these guys can't stick upside down and you don't want to lose any geckos. I always make sure I just kind of move them away from the top so I don't lose any of them. You can see there's actually some eggs on the top of the cage here. Those are fertile eggs, these ones here, and you can see the spots where older eggs were. These are fertile eggs. They'll actually lay the eggs on this little lip right here and eventually those will hatch out. The sad part with these guys is if you don't find the babies in time, they will actually eat their young. So normally I keep these, our fish tank decorations, these guys here, and they'll lay the eggs up inside these. They'll stick the eggs to the inside and that makes it real easy. You can take the whole thing out and hatch the eggs that way. I'll get more into that into a future breeding video for these guys. But for now, let's just put it back together. So the first thing I use that goes in here is this ladder. You can see it's kind of discolored on the bottom where it always sits in the soil. These are actually bird decorations. I get them at the pet store in the bird section and I really like them because they just sit in here just like that and it gives them a good spot to climb. It takes up a lot of vertical space in the cage and I really like using these to give these guys a nice vertical spot. And then I have two different plants here. This one I tend to kind of weave down through the rungs of this ladder so half of it hangs down this side and half of it hangs down the front. And I like doing that because it gives them this ladder where they have a lot of space, vertical space to climb, but the ladder is also covered in these leaves so they get a little bit of protection so they can feel safe climbing up this. They've got a space to hide. I just put them all down through there, arrange the backside so it hangs down. Those hang over the front. 
That gives them kind of a protected vertical space to climb on. And then the other thing I have is this real thick fern. These are just plastic reptile plants that you can get at any pet store. And I like this real thick fern because it's got a ton of climbing spaces. It's real light, but that's okay. These geckos don't weigh anything, so they can still climb up this. And it gives them a good thick spot to go hide. And this one just suction cups right to the side. Just like that. And it kind of hangs down next to the ladder. Gives them a nice dense spot back in the back there where they can hide. Makes it real easy for them to feel safe and secure. And then I tend to move the fish tank decorations kind of back underneath. Again, so they're more hidden. So when they want to get out of sight, out of mind, they've got a nice hidden spot to go back and hide. The last thing I put in, a magnetic feeding ledge. I got this one from Pangea. I like these guys. These guys really like to eat an elevated food dish and it keeps it off the ground so they don't get dirt in their food dish. So these work great. And I usually just stick that guy right here on the front. It's important with these that you don't just drop the magnet up against this magnet or you can crack the glass. So you want to actually set it and then slide it up. It'll hold it right in place. A little tiny cap of gecko diet in there and that's it. It's that easy, that simple to put together a cage for these morning geckos. A real basic setup like this will work great for them. You put your lid back on and then if you need a heat source, you can put that right over the top here. I personally, I have these guys sitting next to a heater that I use to keep our hatchling and grow out rooms a little bit warmer than the breeder room because it boosts the metabolism in our crested gecko hatchlings. So I keep them a couple degrees warmer. I put these guys right next to the heater so they stay nice and warm. They like it, it's perfect. They're obviously being prolific. There's already eggs in here. I keep about 20 geckos in a cage to the side. So I've got two of these right now. And uh, that's it guys, real simple. These guys are awesome, awesome, simple pets. You're really gonna love them if you choose to get into them. I highly recommend it. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this helped you out. As always, altitudeexotics.com, facebook.com slash aegeckos. The same thing for Instagram. Do not hesitate to shoot me a message if you have any questions. I appreciate it. We'll see you guys soon. Thanks.